Welcome to the Consciousness Anywhere and Everywhere podcast. I am Shannon O'Hara and I invite you to a completely new world of possibilities. Hello everybody and welcome to the Consciousness Anywhere podcast. I have had a different kind of inspiration for this podcast recently in that I haven't been inspired to create them, which is interesting to look at and something that I've really struggled with. It's been going on for about half a year, maybe a little bit more where I've been like, uh, am I finished with this? What else can I add? Where does this need to evolve to? And basically where it's come to is that I'm now just going to do these podcasts when I'm inspired. So the regularity is going to change. And I have had this idea to do this thing that I keep putting like kind of putting down as an idea because it seems like not profound enough or not relevant enough, which is this idea to do an entire podcast dedicated to my recommendations. And I am somebody who loves recommending things. I'm like one of those kind of people who has tons of recommendations and loves to sort of share what I love and what really works for me. And I thought I would just do that for those of you guys that are interested, for anyone that cares, here you go, take it or leave it. And I was talking with my husband before this about like, I could recommend like a billion things, but really what I'm going to do right now is just recommend like what I'm most excited about, what I'm most inspired about. And it's not consciousness related stuff necessarily. I mean, it actually isn't. It's more like my personal sort of personal hygiene, grooming, movement, books, that sort of thing, music. Um, This is the kind of stuff like I never share and I never talk about, but it's sort of like sharing this with you guys, like like sharing with my friends the things that I'm really into, so, but on like a really large scale. So for those of you guys that are into this, uh, you know, I hope you enjoy. For those of you guys that this is totally irrelevant for, skip it. There'll be another Consciousness Profound episode, sure, soon enough, I'm sure, plus the entire library. Don't forget there's a huge library of Consciousness Anywhere podcasts that range in topic from fear to consciousness to relationships to, I mean, I can't even, it, there, it's a lot. So, you know, you could listen to a new one every two days for like a year and it would really contribute dynamically to like every area of your life, if I might toot my own horn. So there you go. Actually, the first thing I'm going to do is recommend a podcast, which is funny, but, um, or maybe it's not funny. I, there, I don't actually listen to a ton of podcasts. Um, and I sort of go off and on with podcasts. I feel like I was very late to the podcast game in the first place. I didn't really start a podcast till very late. And um, anyways, it is a resource that I do really enjoy and love. And the one that I actually tend to get the most from, and it's not casual listening, so it is definitely an educational podcast, is the Huberman Lab podcast um, with Dr. Andrew Huberman, who is from California, like me. I love listening to him. He is so smart and I love most of the topics that he goes through. Um, Some of them aren't as relevant to me as others. He's a neuroscientist at Stanford University and he's really handsome too. So that makes it really fun to watch and to listen to him. Um, But he has released some podcasts that have greatly enriched even my experience, understanding, and application of consciousness. He's not talking about consciousness, he's talking about neurochemistry, but he also has tons of other uh, scientists and professionals and professors on his podcast and they talk about the microbiome, uh, exercise science, um, but my favorite ones of his conversations are the ones that are about neurological stuff, which is something I'm hugely fascinated by and also something that adds a lot to my ability to be conscious and to access greater capacity. So the Huberman Lab podcast, all my recommendations, by the way, will be linked um, in the show notes below, either on YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, or on my website, if you go find the podcast in the podcast section of the Shannon Dash O'Hara website, everything will be linked so you can enjoy. So that's my podcast recommendation, but be prepared to tuck in. They're long. They're like two to three hours long. So he's really giving a lot of content and I've had, I've actually re-listened to a bunch of them multiple times just because there's a lot of stuff that he said that I've had to sort of like learn. So if that's your thing, Huberman Lab podcast, Huberman Lab podcast. Okay. So that's my podcast recommendation. Now that's actually the thing that I'm like the most excited to recommend, which I find strange but funny is, um, and really 
interest of interest to me is um, like body products. So I have been like kind of like a health fanatic for most, all of my adult life and I have a huge skin sensitivity. It's actually really interesting. I can eat less clean things than I can put on my skin. Like I could drink Coke, I can eat McDonald's and sort of get away with it. Whereas if I'm using a chemical product on my skin, my skin rebels like immediately. My skin is, well, the skin is our, the large, largest organ in our body, but my, my skin particularly is very specific. It wants a very specific kind of lotion, a very specific kind of soap, a very specific kind of deodorant. So I've really searched high and low for like the best products um, that, and so I wanted to share some stuff. Ladies, this is mostly gonna apply to you, Actually, gentlemen, a lot of this will apply to you too. The thing that I am like the most enthusiastic about, which I, I share with like everybody, is this deodorant, Nude, N-U-D. It's made in the Netherlands. And I just like saw like an Instagram ad or something for this like a year ago and I checked it out and I am a firm believer in this stuff. It's all natural, like it's good for you. So it won't, but it's, you put like a, t so you basically squeeze a tiny bit out on your finger like a pea size and then you rub it on your armpits. But the thing that I love about it is it actually doesn't cover up your odor. It basically counteracts the bacteria that, that creates odor. So, and you wear it basically depending on your body type, depending on the time of year, depending on your hormon hormonal cycle. Ladies, I don't know if, you're, if your body odor is affected by her, your hormonal cycle. Mine is mostly affected by like travel and season and just the stress that my body's under just how I'm feeling. But basically I put this on like anywhere between three to five, every three to five days. And I can sometimes get away with six days. So you put it on and then you can just forget about it. And it completely works for me. I don't smell, it's like incredible. And I mean, even under rare circumstances, like in the winter in like Europe, I can just put this on once a week and I don't smell at all. And I love that I don't have to put on deodorant every day and I love that it super works. It really works for my body. A girlfriend of mine actually got this and didn't read the instructions and was putting on like a huge amount every day. And she said she got really sore under her armpits. So definitely read the instructions. Definitely don't put on too much. A little bit goes a long way with this stuff, but it, I think it does have bicarbonate in it. Yeah, it does. Which is I think what her armpits were getting irritated by. And I think that they might make one without sodium bicarbonate if you know that sodium bicarbonate irritates your armpits. But True Believer, Nude, the website, I'll link it below, of course, but it's nuudcare.com, free worldwide shipping. And this tube is made from sugar cane. So this is a good product. I basically go through one of these tubes. It takes me more than a year to go through one of these tubes. So we're talking super sustainable, really effective product. Can't say enough good things about it. I don't know how it works with armpit hair. My husband doesn't use it, even though I'm emphatic about like, don't you want to try nude? He's like, nah, he's happy with what he uses. Um, I don't know how it works with armpit hair. Gentlemen, you're going to have to find out or ladies who have armpit hair. The second thing, this is for ladies, is this essential oil called Dragon Time. It's a young living essential oil. Um, I got turned on to this some years ago and I use it. This basically, this oil reduces and sometimes completely eliminates my menstrual pain. So I just put a few drops on my abdomen and on my lower back during my like heavy menstruation periods or when my period is most active. Usually for me, it's just the first day when I have any kind of sensation from my period. This stuff just like is like magic for me. So, and I think Young Living develops it and recommends it specifically for menstruation, which is why it's called Dragon Time. But this stuff works like a charm for me. I never am without it. I travel with it. I have it at home. I use it. It's in like my period kit. So. Um, and I think you have to like be a member with Young Living. It's like, a, you know, Young Living's like a multi-level marketing thing. I don't, I signed up for it like years ago under some random person, but anyways, I can order this stuff through my Young Living dashboard, da, da, da. It's like not, like Young Living isn't like that easy to buy from. I don't think you have to like sign up with them or like be recommended by somebody. Sorry, I'm not being that helpful with this. You could probably even sign up through me, but it's like not something I do. I've never figured out how to do that. Anyways, Dragon Time, ladies, try this. Um, again, like I'll probably a bottle of this will last me probably a year and a half or more, but it's essential for me. It takes away my period pain, like magic. So that's, I think everyone should know about this little miracle. It's weird smelling. 
<laughs> but it works. Third, meet my Sonicare toothbrush. I will say that I have been blessed with good teeth and good gums. Like I, I have good teeth. I, this is one of the things I got genetically. So thank you. Yay. Um, but I go to the dentist like once every four years. And every time I go, they say your teeth are, your teeth and gums are in perfect condition. And that's because of this puppy. And I floss as well. Not every day, but nearly every day. But this uses like these sonic waves and it really stimulates blood flow in the gums and it deals with just the bacteria and the plaque that goes on the mouth. Sonicare, I think, is personally my favorite um, toothbrush brand. And this is probably my fourth Sonicare toothbrush. Um, I, I Sometimes I just replace them because they came up with like a new model and I've had the old one for so long and I just want something new. Um, and sometimes I think I had two break, but I've been using them for like since I was like in my early 20s. So get yourself a Sonic Care toothbrush if you're not already using one. It's a little funny when you first start using it, like it does tickle a little bit, but um, yeah, these are, I swear by the Sonic Care. Now, my fourth sort of grooming thing which actually this is the category that has the most stuff, which is interesting to me. It must be what I'm the most interested in. Um, anyways, is this. Now, this is a razor. This, I've only been using this for like a month, so I don't have like a super big review on it, but this is called a Leaf Razor, L-E-A-F Razor. I think .com is maybe their website. It's a US brand, but this reminds me a lot of like the razor that my dad used to use to like shave his face. Like men have those, um, like metal razors, but I'd been using like those plastic Venus razors for most of my adult life with those like changeable heads, which are plastic. And I just thought I'd upgrade to like a lifetime razor. Like they basically say this thing will last like your entire life. And it comes, you, you basically, you change the blades yourself, but they're steel and they biodegrade obviously a lot better than plastic. And you just go through so much less waste. I frankly could get like years of use out of those plastic Venus razor handles. And obviously like I'd be replacing the heads which are made of plastic and steel, but these are just steel. So there's no plastic in this product. It's just sort of like this minute shift here that could have potential future uh, big ramifications of just, this is a product I use all the time that's plastic free that I just replace the razors. You know, you buy the little box of razors, they last for a while. I've only been using this for about a month. It works perfectly well for me. I think it's really pretty. It like stands up in your shower, so. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know if I would recommend this specific razor, L-E-A-F, leaf razor, like wherever you are in the world. Like I think that there's a lot of these sustainable lifetime uh, metal razors that you can buy. Um, that don't have plastic. So check it out if you're interested. That's just something I think is an easy, that's an easy way to reduce your uh, single use or not very many use plastic consumption. And my last recommendation is something called a shampoo bar. I first learned about shampoo uh, bars watching one of my favorite YouTube accounts, which I'll also recommend, which is Sailing La Vagabond. I um, would say I only recently got into YouTube like last year and I like love sailing the Vagabond, but I love travel. And it's an Australian couple who sails around the world and they've got two kids, but they make like amazing. She, she's like an incredible editor and content creator. And I mean, I think he does too, but I think she's like, a, she's a really dynamic artist. He's like the sailor. Anyways, she was talking about these shampoo bars that they get because they come in cardboard rather than plastic. And I was like, shampoo bar, yeah, right. Like, cause my hair is like super fussy. But eventually one of my great girlfriends actually gifted me the shampoo bar from France. And I'll put a picture of it here because I don't have it with me. Um, I don't travel with the shampoo bar cause it gets like mushy, but I use it at home a lot. And I'll, this is the brand that I love. However, I have not tried all shampoo bar brands and there are so many now on the market and some of them work better than others for sure. And I think depending on your hair type, et cetera, et cetera. So I love this French brand that will link, the website will be linked below. Um, but again, it's, this is just a shout out for shampoo bars. Like I was trying to like, I've, I've, I've been like trying to convert my hair dresser, like the girl that colors and cuts my hair to shampoo bars, but like she like totally won't believe their effectiveness, but I really doubted them too. And I got this one from France that just, works like amazing in my hair and it's like super quick. 
and then you're done because it's the it's all in one like you don't condition it's like both and it makes my hair like really light and really soft and it's something I'm like wow I think this is like a really interesting sort of like direction to go in because shampoo bars come wrapped in cardboard they don't come in plastic um, and you get a lot of use out of them they're super natural depending on the ones you get. But yeah, you'll have to explore like what shampoo bar works for you. And I think they also do make conditioning bars too, but I've not used one. I don't really need one. But if you do get a shampoo bar, I would really recommend that you get one of these like things that like sticks out of the shower and put a magnet in your shampoo bar and like magnetize it to the hook because like they can get really mushy like soap if they're not dried properly. That's why I don't travel with it because it just turns into like mush. And then when it turns into mush, it wash like the effectiveness of my hair changes. So it has to be dry when I start using it. Like and you create a lather and just, yeah, shampoo bars. So that's my last sort of uh, hygiene grooming tip. And there's the most of those. So moving on, obviously I mentioned Selling the Vagabond as like one of my favorite YouTube channels. I love them. They come out with a new video like um, once a week and it's so much fun. You wanna check them out, check them out for sure. Um, while I'm on the topic of like online stuff, something that I highly recommend is checking out the search engine Ecosia. Um, many of you listening to this or watching this have heard me talk about Ecosia before. And if you haven't, check them out. They're a search engine that uses something like 80% of their profit to plant trees. And they're based in Berlin. And I've been using Ecosia for like maybe two years now and it's gotten better and better and better all the time. The more we all use it, the better the search engine gets. It's not as like pimped out and pinpoint as Google obviously, but it still works awesome. And it's, I've got like, when I, you know, log on to my browser, I've got my Ecosia launch like place. And then up in the corner, it says how many trees that I've planted with the searches that I've done. So this is like a super easy way to contribute to the reforestation of the earth. Um, Cause most of us are just like surfing the web and browsing on our computers all the time. So ecosia.com, check it out, start using it. You just sort of like ins install it in your Chrome browser or whatever browser that you use on your computer. And yeah, check it out, Ecosia. One thing that I was looking at when I was talking to my husband about like what recommend recommendations I could give, cause I could give like a million. I thought I would just give a really big shout out to like, gyrotonics so i have also loved sort of physical fitness and exercise like most of my adult life i got super into yoga in my early 20s um in all of my 20s actually i grew up in southern california so there was like a huge boom in like yoga and like sort of alternative fitness um i was sort of at the right place at the right time and that sort of evolved into my love of pilates which by the way i would say is probably like my number one but gyrotonics is i think the most intelligent superior form of movement and physical fitness that you can get these days. It's created by a man named Julio Horvath, who I've never met, but who is still living, who was a Romanian dancer. And he basically like destroyed his body dancing, but then like went on this like vision, like this vision quest. And I would say like brought forward and really channeled um, and transmits this work of gyrotonics. And when you start learning about gyrotonics, it has given me so much wow about how, much, how the body works. It's, uh, I can't really say enough good things about it. I will say, however, that it is, it does ask, you have, you, it really puts you in touch with your body and it really accesses a lot of your body. And I think that can be very confronting for people because if you repress stuff or don't like to access the body or you, you know, want to hide things. <laughs> Boy, does gyrotonics get in it. Any, anyone out there who has done gyrotonics, like how many times, how many of you guys have fully cried in a gyrotonic session, you know? It's like, if you've done gyrotonics for any period of time and you've really gone for it and explored it and have a good trainer and like, I've done a bunch of the training courses, I've been on a lot of the equipment, I've, I, it's big love for it. Um, you know, you've really like hit the mother load when your body just like fully starts releasing because it just, it's so brilliant and energetic. And, and it's, it's, it's like, it's actually hard to describe it because it has so, there's so few reference points in this reality for it. So if you have a gyrotonic studio in your town, in your city, in your village, check it out. Like if you're interested in you're having more access to your body, like I oftentimes akin gyrotonics to being like the access consciousness of exercise um, and yeah, gyrotonics, it'll be linked below. And sort of second, second to last recommendation uh, topic 
um, is books, which is, I sort of juggled with like, what do I recommend? Because like, to be honest, I actually read a ton. Um, to be fair, I actually listen a ton to books. Thank you, Audible. Because I am highly dyslexic and I would read probably at a quarter of the pace of a normal reader. So I prefer to read, uh, to listen to books, which is how I graduated high school, which was by listening to books. Thank goodness for the good special education program they had at my school. Um, and my special education teacher who still to this day, like makes my heart expand with so much gratitude. Anyways, for those of you guys who are dyslexic, aren't we so glad that Audible is such like a big thing now and you can get almost any book on Audible. Anyways, I listen to a lot of books, um, mostly nonfiction. I listen to a lot of, yeah, like, nonfiction. But interestingly, the two books, I'm going to recommend three books. Two of them are my favorite books of all time, and they're both fiction. And I don't read a lot of fiction anymore, it, but I, it's like this indulgent treat to get to listen or read fiction. So sometimes I do, but I also have a hard time finding good fiction books that like really engage me. Um, so I mostly read books on like how to learn things. Like I really love to keep learning. And I might actually recommend more books than I thought I was going to start off recommending. Okay. My first two favorite books of all time, which I both, I read them both um, like every second year, I'll kind of read them every two years, is Lonesome Dove. Um, wow, and I can't even remember the author's name. That's horrible. Larry McMurdy or something? Larry something is the author, but Lonesome Dove, they made a television series from it as well, which actually is like, I think so good, um, but the book is, I don't know what it is about cowboy drama or like cowboy stories, but I am like really into cowboy stories. Who knows? But this book is like, it. even talking about it, like it touches such a chord in my, it is such a brilliant like insight into like the psychology of people, but, but through these like really like simple people who were around in like South Texas in the United States, like in the end of the 1800s, like, and it's fiction, but it's like historical fiction. So there's a lot of, yeah, a lot of that. Lonesome Dove, definitely my favorite book. Actually, the number one spot is shared with another book called The Wizard of Earthsea, which is considered like a fantasy book. And it's actually a quartet. The Wizard of Earthsea is the first book and then it's followed by three other books written by Ursula Le Guin and these books are like next level for me. Like I, it's so my universe. They're so beautiful and it's about magic. And I think the least, how do I put it? It's like the least distorted expression of true magic. It's so pure and like beautiful the way the books are written and like the the land of Earthsea and like yeah it's like that those two books The Wizard of Earthsea and Lonesome Dove like really like shaped my like emotional landscape and like the way that I like experience the world they're just so beautiful so I hope you enjoy them I hope you love them however on audio on audiobook audiobook both of them are horrible I hate the people that read those books whenever I found like a version of A Lonesome Dove or Wizard of Earthsea so those are two books that I read those are the only books that I actually like read um and I've got like really old first edition copies and like I've got my dad's old um copy of Lonesome Dove you know that I stole from him when I was like 19 and then I've got like my good friend um who's deceased, uh, Liam Phillips, gave me this like first edition of The Wizard of Earth Sea that's like one of my prized possessions. So those are my two like fiction recommendations. Then I've got this money book recommendation, which this is obviously if you're interested in that thing, which is Write Riches for You. This is a book actually written by my father. And this money book I read like in my 30s, in my early 30s, and it com this was a huge contribution to me totally sh changing my the direction of my life with money. So there's like, so, this is nonfiction. This is way more like getting conscious, letting go of insane points of view about money, and then like learning how to actually generate money. But I can't say enough good things about this book, really. This is like the foundation of my like whole financial competency came from this and my dad. So grateful for that. Um, I think I might leave some other books for another recommendation conversation because I feel like I'm giving you guys like a lot right now. Um, plus like, I feel like I'd only recommend the other ones because like 
I think I should less because like they really like make my heart sing. So Lonesome Dove and Earth Sea, Earth Sea are definitely like what makes my heart sing. And then my last recommendation, and this is gonna be super subjective for those of you guys that even like music or whatever, like I'm gonna share, I'm gonna link um, my like, my uh, playlist in my Spotify, which is just like my liked songs that I've been like curating or like accumulating for like over two years. And um, yeah, just if you're looking for like a fun playlist, um, if you like music, I don't even know if you'll like my kind of music, but this is my liked music. So take it or leave it, you know, we all have our own tastes. I'll link that below. And again, like it's just music that I like, I hear out in the world or like that I hear somewhere and I'll like sound hound it, you know, and get what the music is. And then I'll like find it on Spotify and then like it. And that's my liked, uh, all my like songs in Spotify. And if you go back like to the very beginning of the playlist, like I don't even really love the songs back then because that's more like what I was connected to then and it keeps evolving and changing. So like you'll hear the music like change a lot over the entirety of the playlist, but um, there's a lot of reggae. So <laughs> if you don't like reggae, you might not be in that into this playlist, but you know, it's something that like I never share with people. Um, you know, I feel like what's on my headphones is such a personal experience. When I was like a teenager, like music was like my identity. And like, I used to share that with like, oh my, like my whole friend group, it was all about music. And we talk about music and learn about music and play music and like talk about bands and da da da. But that's not what my life is like anymore as an adult. So now music is just something I enjoy, like just for me, just for fun. And um, yeah. So my Spotify liked playlist, if you're interested, I think if you're not weird, you probably won't like it. But if you do like it, you're probably a weirdo. So that's my recommendations. Hope you enjoy it. Take it or leave it. Um, yeah. And I would also love, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, I would love to hear like any recommendations you guys have. Like, cause I think we all have such, it's important to learn. Like we all have such important information and tips and stuff for people. Like even like ladies, like, wouldn't it be cool if we could all share information and knowledge about like bras, like what's the best, bra that you've worn for like your breast size and like what's the most comfortable and because like I was talking to a girlfriend of mine the other day and I was just like oh my god like I'm so hating my bras and she's like me too she's like if you find something comfortable for big boobs like definitely tell me and I have much smaller boobs than her so but I like made a point I spent like a whole day in, in LA shopping for bras and like I made like a whole day of it because I had to find out what was out there I had to try everything on and we all know how exhausting that can be ladies so it's even like stuff like you know, everything. If you've got a recommendation, something that's really contributed to your life, that's made your life a lot easier. Like, I just love the idea of all of the best in the world being available to all of us so we can choose it. So that's my recommendations to you. What are your recommendations? See you guys all out there in the world. Bye. Thank you for listening to this show. My target is to make consciousness easy to find and choose. So if you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a five-star review on iTunes and share this with somebody who you know who might be looking for more consciousness in their life. You can visit me on shannon-ohara.com or talktotheentities.com. And to learn more about the amazing tools of Access Consciousness, you can visit accessconsciousness.com and be sure to subscribe to the podcast.